Hi, I'm Julie Smith-David from the W.P. Carey School of Business at Arizona State University, and I teach a course on managing information systems, and this video is an overview to this course. Now, I'd also, I'd like to use it not only to introduce the course to the students, but I'd also like to get feedback from everybody, because this course is unique in that it's designed not for IT professionals, but for aspiring leaders, for people who are going to move up in their organizations, and it should cover the key elements about information technology that every executive needs. So at the end of the video, I'd love to get feedback on what you think about the content that we've selected. So first we've got to start with, well, why should, I, why should executives know anything about IT? Well, I think it becomes pretty obvious when you think about the amount of money that's being invested in technology for most organizations. It's one of the largest capital investments, and not only is it a large amount, but it's a pretty risky investment because sometimes you implement technologies and they can have a detrimental effect on your organization instead of a positive. So I think of it as jumping off the edge of a cliff, that potentially those uh, investments are made in a very risky environment. But when you do it well, what happens is you transform your organization through improved processes, through better relationships with your trading partners, and it can have a really big impact on your organization. And so we believe that all executives need to understand the power of technology. They don't need to be able to do the bits and the bytes, but they need to know how to manage it as a strategic resource that's critical to firm success. So what do we mean about what things they need to know? Well, this course has four modules, and the first module starts by looking at process modeling. And we start at the very highest level, looking at the supply chain, and then we drill down from looking at the broad scope of all the organizations in the supply chain to looking at an individual organization for how it adds value in the supply chain, and then we drill down even further to determine exactly how they execute individual activities or processes within the supply chain. After that module, when we understand the business processes, then we look at what are the enterprise systems that are currently available to enable those processes. We talk about key success factors for implementation, the risks that are associated with these implementations, and even how to do some of the selection and determine which mode of delivery we'd like to use for those applications. In the third module, we think about now that we have all of the applications and we understand our processes, the systems collect a huge amount of data. And for many organizations, that data just sits within their uh, databases or their information systems. It doesn't really add value to the organization. We'll look at how executives can use the data in those systems to be able to make data-driven decisions with looking at doing simple queries to the database all the way through looking at visualization tools like I'm showing here. In the final module, we're going to talk about what happens when the rules change. What, happen when, what happens when an emerging technology comes out and you're not sure what the impact is going to be on the supply chain or your individual processes. You may not even know exactly what the technologies are that it would take to be able to deliver this new emerging phenomenon. It's really the exciting part of the course where you think about what are the creative things that are coming up and how can we harness those to improve our business. So let me go into a little bit more detail. At the process analysis module, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to start, we're going to do three levels of analysis. Those levels are all related to each other because you start at the highest level and then drill down. So at the highest level, we're going to use the Supply Chain Reference Council model and do level one diagramming of the supply chain. We identify what the organizations are in the supply chain, the physical locations of those sites, and how they're related to each other. This is a simple level one diagram. We'll go through and actually it incorporate more to that by recognizing that each physical location has the potential to do sourcing, making, delivering, return, and planning. Those are the five, five basis activities that all organizations do, or at least they do a subset of those. So they may not make something, but they'll deliver and source. They'll add value throughout the supply chain. So we'll create level one modules level one diagrams of the firms within the supply chain that we can influence. To look at each individual firm, however, we'll drill down. And when we drill down, we're going to go to level two, where we're going to look at how that individual firm adds value. To do that, we're assuming that all the resources that they bring in will be used in a way that allows us to transform them and get more money coming out than it took us to get those resources in the first place. And the way that we do that is by using a technique called resource event agent modeling, or REA modeling. The fundamentals of REA modeling are that business processes occur as exchange of resources. 
We want to get a resource, but in order to get that resource, we have to give something away. In REA terms, an economic increment event, an event that increases the quantity of a resource, is always associated with the decrease of another or different resource, at least one. So we see this basic pattern, and we can apply this basic pattern across the whole organization to map the inflows and outflows of all of the resources to identify why we're purchasing those resources, how we're using them, and how we're going to add value to our customers downstream in the supply chain. This is still very high-level analysis, however. We'd like to drill down into more detail and say how exactly do we perform one of those economic events. And so we'll use the level three diagramming technique business process models or swim lane diagrams to show the details of an individual transaction. So at the REA level, we'd have a sale, which is a decrease of inventory with an exchange of cash. Well, at this level, you can see that for a fast food restaurant, we have a number of different entities that participate in that sale. Each of the people or the computer is one swim lane, and we show the activities or the steps in the process in the swim lane diagram. All of these techniques can be used to evaluate your current processes, document them for Sarbanes-Oxley control, Sarbanes-Oxley compliance. You can use them to evaluate new introductions by doing as-is and to-be modeling, and we'll talk about all of those in the class. Once you understand your processes, then you're going to be thinking about what are the technologies that enable those processes. So here's a supply chain of three companies. We're going to look at the focal company, and to manage their internal processes, many organizations use an Enterprise Resource Planning System, or ERP. Those systems are integrated. Uh, an initial transaction or an, an initial event that occurs in the real world can trigger a whole stream of processes, and those activities are all captured within the ERP system. We'll talk about those as part of this module. But then we'll extend throughout the supply chain and think about how can we do supply chain management better. We'll talk about supply chain management systems such as advanced planning and scheduling or APS tools that help us manage our internal inventory levels and even our interactions with our suppliers. Similarly, we'll talk about customer-related systems called customer relationship management systems. How do we understand our customers so that we can provide them the products and the services that they want and need in a way that will be beneficial for us? After we've done that, we're also going to be talking about the emerging technologies. And so in emerging technologies, we'll see that the supply chain and the customer relationships are being transformed. In the final module, we'll look at crowdsourcing, social networking, other opportunities for integration with advanced tools. All of these applications are capturing data, and so there are huge amounts of data. We're going to talk about how that data can be used for business intelligence, BI, that will give us a sense of the health of the organization. And we'll talk about business activity monitoring tools that actually take existing data and then influence our business processes in order to avoid bottlenecks or slowdowns in the processes themselves. So enterprise systems are the second module within the course. The third module focuses on how do you make data-driven decisions. And so we have to understand the data and how it's structured in the systems. This is perhaps the one part of the course that's a little bit more technical because we're going to do hands-on activities. But the good news is it's going to pull the materials from the very first module in. In fact, the REA models that we develop in module one will become the foundations for the data modeling in this module. So we'll learn how to model data using UML diagrams, which this is an example of. And then we'll turn those UML diagrams into databases. And we're going to use Access as the tool for that. Organizations frequently run on much larger databases. But if you understand the concepts in Access, you'll understand the concepts in other systems. Once you understand how a database is organized, then getting data out of it to make data-driven decisions is really pretty simple. We'll use the Query by Example tool within Access in order to do queries to be able to make some simple decisions on the databases that we have. So you'll actually get some hands-on experience, which other students have said has been very valuable on their internships, and we believe gives you a, a good fundamental understanding. That leads us to the point in the course where we look at emerging technologies. The emerging technology that we're focused on now are Web 2.0 technologies or social media technologies. These are the technologies, kind of think about doing Facebook, but within an organization. We all know that the Web 2.0 technologies, the emerging websites, the mobile applications, 
are really transforming our consumer experience, but how can businesses harness those to make business decisions? So we're going to start by looking at all of the individual building blocks that make these new systems possible, and then we're going to talk about how they transform the business processes, the types of data that we could get, and the types of decisions that would be made. So we'll explore an emerging technology in detail to see what we've learned with uh, basic technologies that are commonplace, how we can apply that to new emerging technologies. Taken all together, then, we believe that this course will provide you with the foundations necessary to analyze your processes, identify opportunities to change your processes for competitive advantage, and provide you with the data in order to make those decisions from a position of power rather than from a position where it's just a gut instinct. And so I really appreciate your taking the time to listen. I hope that you understand how these four modules will fit together. There will be more videos with each of the individual modules, the learning objectives, how we actually are going to meet those objectives. And so thanks for listening to this, and feel free to provide me with feedback. I really appreciate it.